Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today's topic is embrace the challenge by shifting your perspective. Today's Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there or mothers to be. Today's topic is talking about embracing those challenges that are inevitable and that actually are necessary that we encounter as we create our vision. Before I jump into today's topic, I wanna to share something that was interesting that happened to me this morning that was actually in alignment with yesterday's video. So yesterday's video was about not forcing things, allowing yourself to flow and be in alignment and a way to tell if you're in alignment is that synchronicity starts to happen in your life. So I thought I'd share a cool synchronicity with you guys that happened just this morning. A couple of days ago, or I've been feeling lately, you know, I've been getting back into my scribe mindset, a lot of writing, uh, a lot of obviously speaking, reading is part of that. And I was gifted a book during a yoga retreat I went to a couple of months ago, and it just didn't seem like the right book for me to read. And a couple of days ago, I had the book pop into my head, Power Versus Force by David R. Hawkins. Highly recommend, especially you, you're a light worker, you're conscious, you're awake, that if you have not read that book, I highly, highly recommend and suggest that you re read that book. David R. Hawkins, Power Versus Force. It's basically a map of consciousness and talks about the vibratory, he basically put these states of consciousness on a numerical scale. And you're able to identify where you're at in the map of consciousness based on the emotions and there's a numerical value to it and a way to test what vibratory level you're at. It's fascinating. I'm actually gonna reread it after I read the book that I just picked up by him. So anyways, I had that thought in my mind or just a flashing vision of like, you should read that book. Or I was like, should I read that book again? I don't know, I've already read it. Didn't feel like the right one. So anyways, went to Barnes and Noble today to get a book. I didn't know what book. I walk in the bookstore and you know, they have all the little tables set out with, you know, new novels and things like that. On the very first table walking in to this bookstore, I see the book Letting Go the path to surrender let me get it for you guys here letting go the path to surrender by none other than our guy david r hawkins and i was like i'm pretty sure this is the one this is the one i'm supposed to read i have it in my backpack right here let me get it for you guys letting go the path of surrender highly recommend you read before you read that one if this resonates great but read uh power versus force first because in this book as i've jumped in just to read the foreword and a few things it, seems, it expands off of that first book. So you can read this one, I'm sure, in and of itself, and it's fantastic, but I think this will be a lot more valuable to you if you read that other one first. So once again, David R. Hawkins, Power Versus Force, highly recommend it. So anyways, this book, Letting Go, is sitting there right on the first book to the right on the little circle table. There it is, next to Way of the Superior Man, uh, The Untethered Soul, all these other books that I'm familiar with. The Body Keeps Score, all these things that a few of them I've read, but I was familiar with pretty much all of them. But that was like, oh, this is the one. So I picked it up and I was like, cool. I brought my little dog uh, with me, uh, Manny with me in the store. I realized like he needed to go to the bathroom when we were in the store. So I was like, let me drop the book and put it down and go out, take him to the bathroom real quick outside somewhere and then we can come back in, I'll buy the book. Uh, when I go back to the table, I noticed that there, there was two copies when I picked up this one. I noticed that that other copy was gone and I was thinking to myself, I was like, wasn't there two copies here? I was like, no way, am I freaking out? Is this like a Mandala effect or whatever? Something happened, like shifted dimensions. I was like, "Where's what's going on? I know there was another copy here literally a few minutes ago. So for whatever reason, I look up and I, I scan around for whatever reason. As I scan around, I look up and this woman, like, I don't know, 15 feet away from me has the book in her hand. So I go and I approach her and I go, miss, I don't mean to startle you. I was like, I just noticed we have the same book in your hand. You know, what is, you know, what had you grab this book? Have you read Power Versus Force? And she's like, no. She's like, I've actually heard of that book. I actually thought this was a different author who's like a medical author. And I've been telling myself I need to get back into reading, which is what I've been telling myself I need to get back into reading. Uh, so that's part of the journey. And so I just thought it was so cool that like, of course, I grabbed this book. It's the first book I go in. I didn't know what I was gonna get. I had this vision a couple days ago or a week ago, whatever it was that I was thinking maybe I should reread re Power Versus Force. 
So I come back in, I get his next, you know, this book and I connect with this woman and we had a nice little chat. She's like, yeah, you know, I'm in the spiritual in the more spiritual reading and things like this. And I was like, oh, that's fantastic. So anyways, that was a cool synchronicity. All that to say and share that story was for me, that's a clear nod from the universe that I am in complete alignment and that I'm really in tune with my intuition by just trusting that, hey, I'm supposed to go get a book over at this bookstore. I don't know what book yet, but I know I'm supposed to get something over there. And then of course, following my intuition, my heart, I was led right to it by spirit. And then this woman was a beautiful confirmation for that. So it goes back to yesterday's video. When you're in alignment, when you're in the flow and you're not forcing things, you're in tune with your heart, your intuition, your vision, the universe will leave breadcrumbs, it will guide you, and the more you let go and trust, the more it will happen, and I spoke about that in yesterday's video about letting go and trusting, and of course, the book I get today is letting go the pathway of surrender. <laughs> so, I'm really excited to share what I learned and some of the insights that come not only from this book, that, but some of the, maybe the past lessons I've learned that come up as I read it. So, today, shifting to today's video, embrace the challenge by shifting your perspective so this is about overcoming and shifting your perspective in ways that will support you and overcoming the difficulties the challenges that you're going to face as you go along the path of manifesting your vision there's going to be times when you're going to say man i do not want to do this i just do not want to do this anymore the example that came to my mind as i was writing this down and thinking about it was the past, another past video I made about now you're awakened and you can't work the same job you used to work at. And so every day now, the more sensitive you get, the more evolved you become, the more aware you become, the more that you learn, it's gonna get harder and harder to be in that heavy, dense environment of a workplace if this is your situation and you no longer wanna do it. This is the challenge. This is gonna be a challenge for you to embrace that this workplace is still helping you pay your bills and take care and that now you recognize you have to shift your perspective and recognize that this is now a vehicle to get me to where I want to be to work for myself and have a soul-based, heart-based, fulfilled, purposeful business that's really supporting my vision and really my gift in giving to the other world or giving to uh, the world and the way of serving other people. You're gonna have days, I do not want to do this. So how do we overcome these challenges? What are some tools or ways that we can work around this so that you know we're not just dreading and just living in this negative sense of being when we're in this thing that we no longer wanna be in? And one of the things that I wrote down first was shifting your perspective from I have to to I get to. I learned this in an emotional intelligence course that I did up in LA when I was living there at the time. We used to always uh, talk about this. It becomes like a meme after a while, but it's true. It's not I have to, it's I get to. So it's not like, oh man, I have to do this. No, it's I get to do this. I get to do this, I get to, it's a gift. So it's not I have to go to work, I get to go to work because as I get to go to work, this is going to support me in paying my bills, saving money, and helping me align with what I need to align with, taking care of what I need to take care of in order to get to where I want to be. So it's not, and I have to, it's I get to. I don't have to work out, I get to work out. I used to always tell my clients this, you know how many people in the world that are in wheelchairs or whatever wish they had full functioning of all their limbs? You know that they wish they could get to run. Not that they have to, but that they get to. So it's not that I have to work out today, oh God, I have to work out. No, you get to work out, it's a perspective shift. You know how many people in the world wish they could work out, they can no longer work out? that don't have use of their limbs, that have some kind of debilitating uh, debilitating, debilitating uh, condition in which they are physically inhibited and they wish they pray to God someday that they could work out. It's not I have to, it's I get to. So that is a big perspective shift. I don't have to do this stuff, I get to. Even more so, owning your power. I choose to. I choose to do this. So that's one perspective shift questions to ask yourself when it's really difficult and be like, fuck, I don't want to do this. Because we're all human. We all have that. I had that this morning. That's why I'm writing this video. Really talking to myself a lot in a lot of these videos. Um, I ask myself, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? What is the purpose? What's my intention for doing this? Going into a job I no longer enjoy. Why am I doing this? I'm doing this so I can 
save money and take care of my financial responsibilities in order to support me as I continue to build my vision. Very clear, very, very clear. So once I reframe it, that this is, I get to, you know how many people that are unemployed that wish they had a job right now? I have a great job. And although it's not my long term, it is a temporary stop and a stepping stone along the path to my journey. I get to go to work even though I don't really want to today. I get to because this is a supporting stone and uh, pillar to create the vision that I desire. The other question is, well, what benefit does this have to my life? What is this challenge? What is this challenge presenting to me? And what's the benefit of me overcoming this challenge? Well, I'm learning perseverance. I'm learning, I'm practicing emotional intelligence and emotional uh, maturity and gaining a greater understanding of how my thoughts are interlinked with my behaviors and my actions. So I'm increasing my self-awareness, which is only gonna help me and support me in teaching others and benefiting me in my own life in a lot of other ways that I probably haven't even come to realize yet. What's the other benefit? Well, the benefit is by going into work, even though I don't want to today, I get to take care of myself, I get to take care of my dog, I get to sit here and pay my bills for my car, right? It's simple, but it's true. Sometimes we just need to take a deep breath and step out of the emotional distress that we feel in order to frame things in a way that can create a good feeling and emotional disposition about whatever challenge we're facing. Well, what's the benefit of me going and working out? I mean, you can bump, bump, just start listing them off. You know this stuff. So I say a lot of my videos, I'm not teaching anything you don't know. I'm just simply here as a, a reminder. Some of this stuff you may have never heard. Some of it you may have heard, but you do know a lot of this stuff inherently. There's a book and I've actually never read it. So I'm not going to recommend to read it because I have not read it. But at least I, I have read or understand the premise of the book. It's by Ryan Holiday. It's called The Obstacle is the Way. And he's more of a stoic philosopher. And I don't know too much about stoic philosophy. I mean, I've read some of Marcus Aurelius's meditations and I'll get into them deep at some point when I can um, you know, sit down and really dive into a lot of these texts and study them and live them and understand them in a deeper level. But anyways, his book, The Obstacle of the Way, Stoic Philosophy, uh, philosophy it is what it says, I'm pretty sure. I'm sure he expounds, it's much deeper than the surface level, but the obstacle is the way. So if I wanna get to where I'm gonna be, what's in my way? That obstacle is where I need to go to because by overcoming that obstacle, that's molding and shaping my character and giving me a set of skills and tools that I clearly need to learn and embody in order to get to my final goal, my vision, my destination, the obstacles, the way. Lifting weights, you wanna get ripped, you wanna get shredded, you wanna lose weight. Yes, it's a mixture of diet and exercise, lifting weights, resistance training, you're, you've got to lift heavy weights, that's how you're going to get a harder, firmer physique that obstacle of lifting heavy weights is physical resistance of god dang this is heavy the obstacle that's the obstacle lifting the heavy weight but every time you lift a heavier weight your body changes that much more and that much more the obstacle is the way so now i'm gonna i'm gonna read that book you know but i'm not gonna suggest it until i read it because i never suggest or share anything that i haven't experienced myself now, this is something that I've practiced in the past, and I know that this book is really gonna support me in having a deeper understanding in a lot of different ways of what it means. Surrender to the situation. This is the situation. I am you know, working this job that I no longer enjoy and haven't enjoyed for a long time and don't wanna be here, and it's actually like really almost making me physically sick. I don't wanna be here anymore. I don't quite knew what I wanna do, do yet, and I can't quit because I have bills, I have a family, I have responsibilities I need to take care of, but I know that I have to do it. You have to surrender to that situation. The more you resist, you go, oh, I hate this job, I hate this job, and you're creating that resistance in your life, that resistance is negative energy. By rounding into the portion of surrender in which you accept it, you're freeing up that energy. You're not sitting here in a resentment and negative energy, which is just going to hold you down like a heavy ball and chain tied around your ankle as you try to climb the mountain to your vision. You've got to let go of that negative energy, that resistance. And we do that by surrendering. 
surrendering doesn't mean I give up. Oh, it doesn't matter. I give up. Who cares? Whatever. It's not, that's not surrender. Surrender is acceptance of the situation. Acceptance is the key word. I accept that this is my reality at the current moment. I accept that this is a temporary circumstance in my life. And I accept that I'm uncomfortable and I don't enjoy it. Once you accept it and you embody it, that weight, the resistance, the negative energy it creates in your life, it dissipates. You don't wanna go to work today, but you get to accept it because shifting your perspective and framing your in a different way, I accept it and even more so, I choose it and I'm actually looking forward to it now because I've embraced it knowing that this is a stepping stone along my path that's gonna get me to where I wanna be. We accept it. Accept what is and embrace it. This is what's creating a strong character and the ability to come, overcome any challenge that presents itself along your path. This is a change in attitude. You have to understand that there's an inner dialogue going on when you are really resisting the challenge. You're saying, oh, I hate this. I hate it because all this stuff. You're thinking negatively about the situation. Again, the opportunity is to reframe your perspective in a positive light by looking at what is this? Why am I doing this? What's my intention? And what's the benefit of this? This is emotional intelligence. This is emotional maturity when we can step out of the feelings and the emotions and that charged energy that we get when we're triggered and we can take a step back and clearly and accurately assess the situation without the the jaded lens of anger or grief or resentment. This is emotional maturity. This is healing. This is emotional intelligence. This is what it is and that's what you're developing. Reframe it in your mind. How do you view the situation? Are you sitting here? What are you focusing on? Shift your focus. Are you focusing on all the aspects and reasons why you hate going to this job? Or are you focusing on the solution? Are you focusing on where this is getting you? Are you focusing on the positive of what this situation is presenting to you? Surrender to the situation. Look at what it's, what it's giving you. There was a time in your life where you prayed for this position. There was a time in your life where you wish you would have been where you're at right now. So be grateful for that. Shift your perspective and your frame of mind. Over time, by doing this over and over, just like anything else, just like uh, shooting a basketball or swinging a golf club or knitting or learning a language or any skill, it's practice. It's practice over time. As you practice and you do this over time, it becomes a way of being. It becomes a part of you. And how valuable is this skill set to be able to take yourself out of your emotions, surrender and look objectively at what this is providing you, what this is supporting you with in order to get you to where you want to be in order to overcome the challenge that you are facing. How are you going to be as a person when you have instilled this and practiced this for so long and now it's just who you are, whatever challenge comes your way, of course, there's gonna be ones that challenge you and that really overwhelm you. That's also part of the growth. But when you can embrace it, what's the growth? What's the benefit for your life? One of the things that uh, comes up in my mind that I, really helped me, especially with today, when I was like, oh, I don't want to do this, you know, whatever. Whenever I'm really feeling difficult in a difficult situation or a difficult challenge, I immediately imagine myself at the end goal and put myself at the end of my vision. Well, what's it going to be like when I'm there? What's that feeling going to be like when I am you know, back home, uh, in San Diego, where I want to be, where, where that's my home. When I can take my little boy, when I can take Manny boy, my dog out to the beach and I'm sitting there in the sand and throwing his ball in the water and looking at the little smile on his face. And I'm just getting sun and just chilling out and relaxing. What's it going to be like? How good is that going to feel? The position I'm in right now, is the vehicle to get me back to where I want to be. This is a stepping stone in my current circumstances. So when things are tough, another tool is to put yourself at that end vision. I do this all the time, every day, multiple times, man. I'm constantly putting myself in the feeling and the vision, especially when things are tough. It's gonna be worth it. Right? It's gonna be worth it. This is temporary. I can overcome this. I have to learn the lessons and overcome this challenge 
This is gonna make me a better person, solidify my character, and eventually I will be back. This is how I get there, overcoming this challenge. That vision completely shifts the energy, completely shifts your vibration. I saw this clip uh, sometime, I think last year, it was Conor McGregor, and he was talking about, it was a short clip, and he's like, you know, I think this is, you know, when you're in those difficult positions, that is really what gets the law of attraction going. That's what really gets gets these these forces of the universe, um, you know, coming, coming to your aid and supporting you. He's like, I used to sit there in my beat up, you know, Toyota or whatever it is at the stoplight with, you know, two spare tires and, you know, whatever, scratch paint and all screwed up. He's like, I would sit at the stoplight and think I'm in a Lamborghini right now. I'm in a Lamborghini. I'm the best fighter in the world. This is me right now. That is powerful when you are in a difficult situation and circumstance right now, but you can transport yourself to your vision and what that's going to feel like when you're there. That is so powerful. And that's what I was saying about doing just imagine to your vision. So it all starts with your vision. And clearly now I'm realizing the next video I need to make is about how to create or develop that vision, that purpose within yourself so that it's so crystal clear. Because at this point, man, mine is so crystal clear. I can see it. I can feel it, taste it. I know it. I smell it. All of my senses are engaged. I'm already there. I really am. But this is the steps that I have to still take and, and the things I need to do in order to physically manifest what it is that I have in my heart still have to do these things because this is the fi the final step of manifestation the physical action so you can do this but that was one thing that st stuck out when you're in that difficult circumstance when you can transport yourself to the end vision man that is so powerful what this is really doing remember you're building strength and character by overcoming all these challenges tell me this when you imagine yourself living in that house, in that relationship, doing what you love, helping people, serving others, making more money than you ever have, happiest life you've ever had. Who is that version of you? Who is that version of you? How do they handle this situation? How would that version of you handle this situation? Would they sit here and go, oh God, my life is so terrible. I can't do this. I don't know what it takes. Is that is that how that version of you would be? The answer is hell no. That version of you would be, okay, I get it. This sucks. Okay, cool. Surrender, accept, got it. Okay, what do we got to do right now? What do I need to make happen? Who do I need to be? Who do I need to talk to? What buttons do I need to press? What tasks do I need to complete? What connections do I need to make? How do I do this? Your best version of yourself, that's the version of you that's living that vision. Take that version of you now and live it now. How does that version of you handle this situation? That is you manifesting. That is you going to a parallel dimension that is you shifting into a higher timeline that's what this is about that is you creating the life that you imagine overcome it i remember seeing a speech by kobe rest in peace buddy um by kobe and he was i think it was some rewards acceptance speech i don't think it was his hall of fame speech. i don't know or it wasn't his hall of fame speech guy rest in peace but it was some kind of reward speech and he was um he was like, what you guys, what most people don't understand is those days when you don't want to go to the gym and it's 4 a.m. and you're sore and you're tired and you're, you just want to lay in bed, but you get up and you go to the gym anyways. He's like, what most people don't realize is that is the dream. Those are the best days of your life. That is when, you, and what I think, you know, at least from my interpretation, what he's saying, that's what builds character. That's what's going to get you there. That's what's going to take you to the next level. That's what's fulfilling when you've overcome that challenge and you look back and go, dang, man, I did it. I did it. You're building such an inner strength and character and getting to know yourself on a level in a way that no one can ever take away from you. This is you reclaiming your power. This is you understanding who you are. This is you learning to be unaffected by the thoughts, opinions, beliefs, and projections of other people because they don't know what you've been through and they don't need to but you know who you are because you know what you've gone through. You know the character and the inner strength that you've developed by overcoming all these challenges. That's something no one can ever take away from you. That's real confidence. That's when that's who you are. That's who you're transforming into being. That's why you're watching this video. This is you. You're on that way. This takes practice, guys. This takes practice. Just like anything, learning a new language, learning to cook gourmet meals, any type of skill set with anything, learning how to throw freaking darts or pool. You got to practice over and over. 
you get better. You practice this way of behaving. You practice this way of thinking. You practice this way of being. And over time, it becomes you. Over time, it sharpens like a sharpened spear. Every stroke, you're just sharpening that spear with the rock. Boom. Getting sharper and sharper. That's what we're doing. That's who you're becoming. This is who you are at the end. You're making it happen. Uh, the quote today that came up in my mind was is from uh, Bruce Lee, right? Name of a more badass person than Bruce Lee, or he's one of the you know top up there. He says, "Don't pray for an easy life. Pray for the strength to endure a difficult one." So don't pray for an easy life. Pray for the strength to endure a difficult one. And the irony of that is, when you become so strong that you've overcome so much, life does become easy because you've practiced this way of being, of shifting your perspective in order to overcome the challenges you need to overcome. This Another quote pops into my mind too randomly about practice, and I'll repeat this again. I believe it's by Zig Ziglar, and he said something along the lines of, uh, you know, positive, uh, positive thoughts are like showers they don't last. That's why we recommend you do it daily. (laughs) Something along those lines, but you get the gist. So I, this is what I do every day, guys. I sit down and I write and I'm like, what's my vision? Why am I doing this today? What do I got to do today in order to move me one step closer to build a brick, to put a brick down? So recommend it, make time for yourself so that you can do this guys. We're doing it together. Pretty soon too. I had the download that, okay, it's time to make a free discord channel. So over this next like week or so, uh, I'm going to put together a, a free Discord so we can start building a community and support each other. And uh, it's not going to cost anything, man. I'm just going to put it in the link. You can join the Discord. Um, and we'll just start chatting in there, man. We'll just start We'll just start rapping and sharing successes with each other and talking about some things. I'll have some ground rules because I know it's going to attract all kinds of different people. And there's going to be people who are going to come in there and troll and try to whatever, you know, push products and all kinds of weird crap. Nah, man, this is going to be a safe, pure place. And I'm gonna do my best as it grows. I, you know, I'll probably have to get someone to help me, but whatever, we'll handle it. So it's just a positive place where you're coming to share your successes, share the lessons and the challenges, and support one another because you're. This is we're the dude. We we are the minority. Most people are not doing this, unfortunately. But that's why we're here. Eventually, it will become the majority. We're gonna pull our card today. <sighs> Oracle deck. Three taps to clear the energy. Inhale deep. Ask for the purest and most divine truth in your highest good and the highest good of all. I always get a chill or one falls out. This this kind of one wants to fall out. Doesn't feel right though, but this is the one. Cool. Today's card, the Knight of Michael. Strong, committed, intellectual, diligent. That's what it says at the top. I always say, look at the card first. What does this image bring up for you as far as thoughts, feelings, any colors or images that stick out? That's your soul speaking to you. Reflect on that. You got something to learn from there or your soul's trying to talk to your intuition. Uh, The message for today, time to move quickly. Choose logic over emotion. Sudden changes. That's what this video is about, guys. It's about not letting your be swept away by the thoughts that come with your automatic emotions. It's surrendering so that we can step out of the charged emotional state in order to think objectively and logically, what is this bringing me? What's my vision like? And then connecting to a different emotion by looking at the end of your vision. The Knight of Michael. I'm going to start trying to make these tighter and tighter. I mean, I don't know. The videos are the length. I'll have to reflect on all this stuff because I don't want to have them be long, but you know, it seems like whatever the messages are, however long they're supposed to be. And I guess, again, answering my question, I just have to trust that whatever is being said and however long the video is, however long the video is. Night of Michael, time for swift action. It will be necessary to move with great decisiveness and confidence. Develop a plan and know exactly how to carry it forward. There is a great deal of activity. This card encourages you to follow your mind over your heart for the results you desire. While you're urged to act quickly, you mustn't act impulsively. So we've been talking about patience. To me, this brings up vision. You've got to develop a plan and know exactly how to carry it forward. You've got to know the end goal. Stephen R. Covey, seven habits of highly successful people. You start with the end in mind. So we've got to develop a vision. I've got to speak on vision and we'll talk about it, how to develop that. Uh, People, a person who is able to accomplish many things at once. 
Someone with a brilliant mind and the capacity to solve any intellectual problem. Strong, focused, committed, educated. This may be a mentor you're looking for, a teacher, or it could be you that it's referring to. Additional meanings of this card, the champion of a cause, sudden changes, lack of diplomacy. So what I got for you today, guys. Love you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you so much again for all your support. I hope this is bringing you value. If it is, please uh, like, subscribe to the channel. And if somebody that you know pops in your head while watching this, please share it with them because chances are that is your higher self saying, hey, this is they need to see this and so and so and whatnot. But love you guys so much. We'll see you next time. I appreciate you. Peace.